All right, what's up, guys? This is Simi out here from Phantom Knight Trading Company, and today we are taking another look at Celebi Genesect, which at this point is pretty much well considered to be the best deck in the format. Um, the reason why we are redoing the Celebi Genesect deck is because Celebi Genesect was literally the first deck video I had made when I first started this Legacy series, and it was made like with like literally a week to two weeks after Legacy format had been created, and so no one really knew the proper builds for Legacy. No one knew how to account for certain parts of the match, how to account for the lack of X Y on trainers, and so the original build that I had was pretty clunky. It had a it had way too many supporters, had a lot of problems with it, was with inconsistency. And so uh, I've redesigned the entire build. There's so many changes, and so I don't even want to really try to keep track of what has changed and what hasn't. We're just going to get into this deck as, as if it's a brand new build. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the primary strategy for this deck is going to be uh, Genesect. He's got this Megalo Cannon attack for two grass and one color. That's just 20 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and is 100 base. He's also got an insane ability, Red Signal, which when you attach a Plasma Energy from your hand to this Pokemon, you may switch it with, you may switch one of your opponent's bench with their active. Essentially, it's a Lysander, and so in Legacy format, there's really no supporter options for Lysander or the uh, Lysander ability. The best option we have in Legacy format is a card called Catcher. Catcher is an item that allows you to to essentially essentially Lysander for a coin flip, but it is a coin flip, and so it's very inconsistent. Uh, a lot of matches do get boiled down to that, and but we don't have to worry about that because with Red Signal, we don't even need to run catchers. We have a guaranteed Lysander within Red Signal's ability. So it makes Genesect a really powerful attacker. Um, we're going to pair him. Uh, if you notice his energy count, it's like two grass and one colorless. That's actually a pretty high amount of energy to be able to try to get onto a Pokemon and still have a lot of speed in the deck. But we are going to be able to mitigate that with uh, Celebi. So Celebi Prime has this Poke Power Forest Breath once during your turn before you attack. If Celebi is the active, you may attach a Grass Energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. This power can't be used if Celebi is affected by a special condition. So it allows you to essentially cheat the one energy per turn rule. You're able to attach one energy with Celebi, the other energy as your manual attachment. And we have other items in the deck, such as Coerce Machine, which says search your deck for a Plasma Energy card and attach it to one of your team Plasma Pokemon. Shuffle your deck afterwards. So this allows us to attach energy through an item. So we have a way of attaching energy through an ability, attaching energy through an item, and attaching manually. And so that's three energy in one turn. So with this combination of cards, you can potentially power up a Megalo Cannon within one turn and get Genesect going. Um, you can even attach red, like the one of the your manual energy drop could be a Plasma Energy, and that allow you to red signal. Uh, what often happens is you're just going to get Celebi in the active, attach two Grass on turn one, and then the next turn two you try to dig for a Plasma Energy to Lysander, a critical Pokemon that the opponent is building up on the bench, and allow you to take a big KO that way. The other reason why Genesect is really strong is because he has his, his own A spec called G Booster. So it's, it gives him a, a separate attack that does 200 damage, which literally one shots everything in the format. Uh, for the same energy cost, two grass and one colorless. It says discard two energy attached to this Pokemon. This attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on the defending Pokemon. So that's an insane effect for this kind of for this kind of attack, especially if you're doing 200 damage. Nothing stops that damage from being done. So what that means is safeguard Pokemon that that can't be hurt by EXs, it doesn't matter, G Booster hits through it. Anyone that has a hard charm, it doesn't matter, the hard charm is no longer calculated for the damage. Anyone that has the uh, special metal energy from Hard Cold Soul Silver, it allows you to reduce 10 damage onto a metal Pokemon that has it attached to it or whatever. If, you, if, if there's a metal Pokemon that has like 3-4 energy attached to it, you're reducing 30-40 damage. But it doesn't matter with G-Booster. G-Booster will still do 200 damage regardless of that. So... Having a way of just blowing up something with, within one turn that absolutely cannot be stopped um, is insane. And that's what makes Genesect pretty much broken in this format. Uh, he's, he's able to do Megalo Cannon with a sniping attack that does a respectable 100 damage. You're two-shotting everything at that point. And he has a one-shotting just a nuclear bomb that just destroys something for and it can't be stopped. So very powerful combination of cards to allow you to basically just overwhelm the opponent. Um, I've won so many matches where like I just essentially just KO whatever they're trying to power up turn after turn within three turns I win the game 
it's just insane what you can do with G Booster and Genesect. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the primary strategy. So let's get into some of the other Pokemon and, and what they're doing here. So if you notice, Genesect is a Grass type and he's weak to Fire. And so Fire is going to be probably the main way you're going to beat Genesect and the main way most people beat Genesect. Um, and that's why we run a 1-1 line of Caterpie Metapod. So Metapod from Hardcore Soul Silver has the green shield Poke body. Each of your grass Pokemon has no weakness. So traditionally in Legacy, and I'm sure if you've played Legacy, you know that grass, that fire weakness is Genesect's biggest problem. But with Metapod in the deck, it's not. You can you have a way of getting something in play that removes your weakness. And so if you have no weakness, the opponent is like left with nothing like how can they deal with a genesect that can one shot you with and you can't even hit it for weakness right so this one one line of caterpie metapod actually has pulled its weight pretty significantly i've like ever since i put this in i've got it out in every fire like against every fire deck i've played and outside of a single instance where he captured my get metapod early it has become a deciding factor in those matches so absolutely I feel like this 1-1 line is totally worth it in this kind of deck just to remove your fire weakness. If you've ever played Genesec, you know that fire weakness is a huge problem with it. And now it potentially is not with this potential tech that you have here. So very good to have this. Uh, very nice bit of remove weakness in this kind of deck. We also run a single basic Verizian for 100 HP. It's got this uh, Giga Drain healed from this Pokemon the same amount of damage you do to the defending. But the Sacred Sword is what we're looking for here. This Pokemon can't use Sacred Sword during your next turn. Uh, so for two grass and one colorless, same as Genesect, you can do 100 damage on, on off of a basic. Uh, just useful to have as a non-EX attacker. Um, the Sacred Sword thing is also mitigated because we have we run a heavy count of switch. And so once you switch into the, the bench, or like, like let's say you switch into a Celebi that has a float stone on it, and then you just retreat the Celebi back into Bruise, and you can hit again for 100 damage. So just very nice to have a non-EX attacker. This is the only non-EX grass type that that has a high damage output like this is the highest damage you're going to get with non ex grass and legacy so uh very useful to have um he's not potentially as useful as anything else like this he i've used him less than every other card in the deck is is the best way to say it so but he's always just good to have i mean sometimes it can be just really really useful i mean it's, there's been a couple matches i remember that this he became very important and was a clutch point in, in how to win so definitely worth it to keep in here we run two Verizian. Now, here's the other reason that Genesect is broken. So, in if you if you're you know a, if you've been a player for a couple years, you know that a couple years ago Verizian Genesect won Worlds. The reason why is because Verizian is an insane partner for Genesect. He's got this ability Verdant Wind. Each of your Pokemon that have any Grass attached can't be affected by special conditions, and then you remove any existing special conditions once Ver Verizian comes into play. Very, very insane because in Legacy, as everyone knows, there is a combination of cards, Hypnotoxic Laser and Verbank City Gym, that essentially poisons you, and then the Verbank City makes a poison damage 3 instead of 1. So it adds 2 to, to add up 3, so um, this is a huge way that a lot of other decks will uh, add up damage. Like, they got start, start stacking damage on you, they put you to sleep potentially, and if you don't wake up, then that's a whole turn that you might lose out if you don't have a switch. Verdant Wind just says no to all of that, just says forget all your special conditions, you're not going to be able to poison Genesec, you're not going to be able to sleep Genesec, confuse Genesec, paralyze Genesec, any special condition is removed and cannot be cannot be put on Genesec if Verizon is in play. So very, very, very powerful and useful ability. Uh, he's also got this attack Emerald Slash for a single grass and colorless. You may search your deck for two grass energy cards and attach them to your bench Pokemon and shelf your deck afterwards. So the old way that the deck was played was you would play Emerald Slash, you do 50 damage, and then you would accelerate two grass energy onto Genesect, and then you would just need one more energy drop after that to be able to hit with Genesect. However, if you think about it, you still have to have two energy onto Verizian to do so, and you need to have two turns to be able to get that going. So... It's not as fast as Celebi Genesect. Celebi, you can potentially power up a Genesect in one turn. If you had a Celebi, energy in your hand, and a Chorus Machine, that's all you really needed. Or with the Celebi, meaning you would have two energy. So if you had two energy in your hand, and then Celebi in play, and a Chorus Machine, Genesect is powered up in one turn. You don't need anything else. Um, so 
He's here as a good option. Emerald, Emerald Slash is an option. However, you're really not going to use Emerald Slash in this deck. You're really going to be just using him for Verdant Wind. So usually what happens is you get one of these out early on. If you feel like the opponent's deck does not play uh, Verbank or Hypnotoxic Laser, you potentially don't even need Verizian. Just be, you know, be it. A lot of the meta decks in, in, in Legacy have been decided already. And so you can kind of feel and know if certain decks will be running um, any sort of special conditions or not. So it can save you a bench spot in those situations. However, very useful to have to remove all special conditions from play, essentially, for Genesect. So very nice to have. And two count means that, he, you know, if one's prized, it doesn't matter. So it's just an extra insurance. And to, the ability to remove special conditions is worth that insurance, worth the spot. Two Jirachi, because we have a couple of specialty supporters. And these specialty supporters are really important to be able to get the G-Booster. Um, getting a G booster out early, I don't care. I mean, if you if you're a Genesect player, I'm not sure what kind of build you might have. You know, some people play it differently. However, everyone would probably who plays this deck would probably unilaterally agree, agree that um, getting a G booster out early is very important. Even if he gets discarded by Toll Scrapper, the fact that you have Junk Arms to be able to get them back at any point in the match becomes very important. So getting a tool, getting a G booster out early is very very important. It can literally change the face of a, of every match that that it happens in. So Jirachi is here uh, if and potentially for two reasons. You know if we don't have a supporter in hand after a supporter, you know Jirachi is our way of getting one. If we need a G booster, we can get Skyla into G booster using a Jirachi. So two Jirachi is very useful. Honestly, um, I tried the build with with just one Jirachi. It's not worth it. I think two is too important. It's like someone's trying to challenge me, so I'm just going to reject that real quick. And um, so continuing on, very just very useful for extra consistency. If you don't know what it does, it has the ability stel Stellar Guidance. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, and then put it into your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. So it just gets you a supporter if you can play it from your hand to your bench. So just very, very good for consistency. Very good, for sure, to have a two count in this deck. The other card that's very important that we have is Mr. Mime. It's got this bench barrier ability, prevent all damage done to your bench Pokemon by attacks. So he's a bench warmer, he's just going to sit there, and the reason why he's here is because it just removes all sniping options for the opponent. And that actually is that actually is very important because so many important decks in Legacy have snipers. They're able to hit the bench while they are attacking the active, and so that can potentially help them to set up two KOs. You notice that Celebi only has 60 HP, so he gets two shot from a snipe from Darkrai and Kyurem, and um, he gets like four, he gets three shot from uh, opposing Genesex. So, you know, 60 damage is really not much. Uh, 60 HP is not much, and so Mr. Mom is here to help protect your bench. Very important, just was a one of tech because. If you think about this, it changes the Darkrai matchup completely. Darkrai, if there's a Mr. Mime in play, Darkrai can only hit you for 90, not even. And so, like, hitting for 90 is literally bad when you when Genesect has the option to one-shot the Darkrai with a G-Booster. So, And then also the Megalo Cannon is hitting for 100, so you're actually doing more damage baseline. Even if, if, if they have a Mr. Mime and you have a Mr. Mime and they're playing Darkrai, you have Genesect, they're doing 90, you're doing 100, it's just better, you know? Other Kyurems, like opposing TDK, Mr. Mime is, is a godsend because your bench is protected. Kyurem is a huge problem uh, because you can just snipe your Celebes, it can snipe your Jirachis within three turns, it can even snipe your Metapod if they're playing some sort of fire build. So Mr. Mime is just too important to not have, to not play in a Genesect. And it's a single card, you know, it's worth it. It just, it just pulls its weight, it does, in so many matches. So those are all the Pokemon going into some of the items that we have. We run one alpha lithograph, so this says look at all of your face down prize cards. Um, essentially, it's a town map, but better, because a town map shows the cards, shows your prizes uh, to your opponent as well as yourself. However, alpha lithograph only sh allows you to look at your own prizes. The opponent doesn't know what's, your, what's in your prizes. And so it's very important because you have information the opponent doesn't. So what often happens is you just play the alpha lithograph and then I just like take a snapshot of my prizes so that I know exactly what I'm getting. Now, you might ask yourself, well, this is a luxury. It's not really essential to the deck, right? However, I would make the case that it is uh, very, it just changes so many matchups in your favor because if you know exactly what's, what's prized, if you if you have a G booster prize, you need to get that 
the first prize you take, absolutely. So that's one potential uh, benefit that it can provide. Uh, the other thing is like, let's say you have some critical pieces in, in the prizes. Uh, the prizes almost acts like a second deck, like a separate deck, you know, like at any given point in the match, you know what to take from your prizes that'll help you out in the next turn. Just adds so much consistency that I feel like it's worth the one spot. And just being able to pull your G boosters as fast as possible is worth it. Being able to get to grab the energy from a prize if when you know that they're going to KO your active and you need the energy for next turn, it's just it's just so important. Um, very useful card. I feel like I think it's worth the the one of spot in the deck for sure. For sure. Moving on, rerun three bicycle. Uh, it says draw cards until you have four cards in your hand. So essentially, you can't play it until uh, like until you have four cards in your hand. So um, it's just an extra added boost of consistency. It's a non-supporter option that allows you to draw cards. So it's just really nice. It pairs really well with Junk Arm because Junk Arm says you discard two cards from your hand in order to find an item from your discard pile. So often what happens is you can Junk Arm into a bike. And so since you've discarded two cards from your hand, you likely have less than four. And so you're able to play the bicycle to maximize your draw. Uh, just super consistent. You know, let's say you don't have a supporter. You have a Junk Arm and a bike though. Like you can even like... Like, you can just uh, junk arm, bike, potentially draw into a supporter to save your hand. So important. Bike is really nice. Uh, now, the three count, that's the other thing. Like, I, I only have it at three count because I want it to be consistent. However, the bike is probably not as important in this build because we do run a full supporter lineup. So, potentially, you might you can cut this down to two. However, I've, you know, there's been plenty of situations where the bike has helped me to potentially even mill out my hand so that I, I could guarantee my draws from a shuffle draw or something like that. Just adds an extra amount of consistency and it's worth it. Uh, potentially you can play two, but I like to play three. Uh, two Colors Machine. So this allows us, to, like I said, to search for the plasma energy and attach it to Genesect. Uh, we run two count because we don't really want to waste our plasmas. And I say waste because like uh, with Celebi, it provides enough energy acceleration that uh, you can have energy drops with the plasma itself. You don't need the Coerce machine to get the energy drop. Sometimes you don't need to power up a Genesect in one turn, right? And so you don't really need this to be a too high of a count. It's really useful to have, obviously, but it's not essential. And I really like playing the plasma energy because if you notice the red signal, it says when you, when you attach a plasma energy, then you can use the ability, right? So you have four plasma energy, and there's, there's, no, there's a supporter option to get one back. However, four is probably what you're going to get. Um, and so you would rather play this for the ability to take critical KOs, right? Rather than accelerating the coerce machine too much. Like if you have to accelerate too much plasma early on and you don't have enough red signals late game, you, might, you notice we don't run any, any catchers in the deck. And so if all they can do, like all they have to do is just play around your, uh, they just like retreat things and, and they can play around your, um, damage output. And so, um, being able to Lysander, I think, is more important than being able to course machine too often. And so that's why there's a two count. Two count's still pretty consistent. It's still worth it um, to have. Junk Arm can get it back if you discard it early. Uh, Skylight can get it if you absolutely need it. So there's plenty of ways to get it out. So two should be fine. We run two Dual Ball and three Ultra Ball. Five ways of getting Pokemon because... Um, you know, early on, we absolutely need the combination of Celebi and Genesect, right? And you're not always going to start with Celebi. You're not always going to start with Genesect. You might even start with one of these other guys. And so um, having five options of, of drawing Pokemon is important. We don't run Collector. And so uh, Dual Ball helps us get Basics. Ultra Ball helps us get uh, the, the, the Metapod and something else as well. Now, you might be asking yourself, why don't you run just four Dual Ball and one Ultra Ball? because most of your deck is basics, except for Metapod. Ultra Ball is really nice because it pairs well with Bicycle. Again, Junk Arm and Ultra Ball both force you to discard two cards from your hand, and Bicycle is there to, to play once you've gone under four. So it pairs nicely, allows you to milk through your deck quickly, allows you to, to hit your drops, and, and then also allows you to just discard cards from your hand if you had to shuffle draw. Um, this combination of Ultra Ball, Junk Arm, Bicycle is a good supplement of draw support on top of your draws, on top of your uh, supporters. So it's just really nice to speed things up in, in the match because Genesect is essentially a speed deck. You're meant to be able to, to like, just put a hot, like a lot of pressure early on with G Booster, with Megalo Cannon, with the Snipes, you know, with the Energy Acceleration. It's just a fast, hit, hard hitting deck. And so 
this allows you to keep that speedy momentum going. Getting into supporters, um, we run 2N, 3 Juniper, and 3 Oak. Uh, that's 8 supporters, 1 random receiver to get you 9 draw supporters. Like, well, 8 draw supporters, 1 random receiver to get you to potentially 9 draw supporters. Um, we also run a single copy of uh, Shadow Triad and a single copy of Skyla, like we mentioned. It's to get G Booster, it's to get uh, Plasmas from the discard or G Booster from the discard. If you have Shadow Triad, Jirachi can get you either of these. However, um, eight draw supporters is uh, at this point pretty much standard in legacy builds. Also, the one random receiver is pretty much standard. Uh, most decks will run this kind of count. Now, what varies often is the type of supporters. Here I've ran three Juniper, three Oak, and two N. The two N is really nice because uh, early and late game it can be useful. Late game, especially against an opponent, like having to end them down is going to be important. Um, three junipers versus two or one is important because, again, we're playing a speed deck, and so we really need to just speed through our deck to be able to find our G booster early. We run enough ways of um, we run enough ways of uh, getting the. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here because I've noticed something. But anyway, we run ways of getting energy back with energy retrieval. And so we can potentially just run through our deck and lose whatever resources we need to to get to what we need at the right moment in the match. So Juniper is really nice to be able to have consistency. Uh, discard support is just better than draw uh, for consistency. So it is what it is. Two, uh, three Oak and two N are is going to be your shuffle options. Oak is really nice and for late game is going to be really nice. So yeah, those are the supporters. Going back to the items, uh, we run two energy retrievals. You noticing that we run nine nine grass and four um, plasma energy because the um, G booster discards two energy if you play it. It's gonna be important that you're able to get your energy drops when you need to, right? Because nine energy is not enough to be honest with you. Like three of them go here, you might potentially lose one or two due to juniper or discarding or whatever. And that's five, and there's four left, right? And so potentially you have um, two G boosters out of that, like three total, if you include the initial three. However, they're going to be able to KO you in the meantime, right? So you lose the extra one off of Genesect as well. Essentially what this means is that if you don't have energy retrieval, uh, G you're only going to be able to get like maybe two G boosters off before you feel like your, en your energy is running way too low. So... Also, 9 is useful because you the perfect turn 1 is Celebrating the Active that accelerates 2 Grass onto a Genesect on the bench. That is your perfect turn 1, and you really want to get 2 Grass on turn 1 for sure. So 9 it helps you to get that amount early and then keeps it consistent late game. And so Energy Retrieval is there. The Energy Retrieval also pairs well with Celebi because Celebi allows you to attach one from it and then one manually and so that's two and that's how much energy energy retrieval gets you so very nice to have junk arms can get it back for you so uh, very good you can even discard it early on to have junk arm options later so pretty nice we talked about the one here where we're going to skip over junk arm uh the only thing to say about junk arm is that you know i don't run four count because um honestly i don't need it for four counts there's been very few matches where I feel like I've lost all my junk arms. Three is actually a perfect amount. Most of my matches, I, f I only ever play three. I never ever, I never usually play that last one, and so I'd rather have that last spot for something else. Junk arm is not useful in the very beginning of the match either. So um, we're trying to be a super speedy deck here, and so junk arm is not going to help us out with that in the first turn of the match. So three count is perfectly fine. Three switch. Now, Switch is going to be one of the most important pieces of the deck because uh, if you notice, Celebi has a 1 retreat cost, Genesect has a 1 retreat cost, and uh, Verizian has a 1 retreat cost, Jirachi has 1 retreat, Metapod 1 retreat, this Verizian has 1 retreat, everything has 1 retreat, even Mr. Mime, and so... Um, what often what the what what you want to often do is have two Celebi on the bench. You can attach the energy with one Celebi, switch into another Celebi, attach the energy that way, switch again using a junk arm potentially to get into Genesect and just hit them with something really strong. Or, you know, if you have a Celebi in the active and you accelerate 
two energy or whatever, and now you're ready to attack with Genesect, you need to get Celebi out of the active. But usually you're going to be saving your energy drop for the Genesect. You, know, you don't ever really want to retreat manually by attaching energy and then retreating with Celebi. So Switch is, that, Switch is there for that. So Junk Arms can get you Switches back. Uh, we even run a single Floatstone as well just to have a Floatstone Celebi. Um, we don't go heavy count on Floatstone because Tool Scrapper is a thing and it lets you discard two tools at a time. So also Floatstone, if they've if if they have a, if you have a Celebi in the active um, and it's Floatstoned and you're expecting a Floatstone to work and they special condition you and he gets like sleep put to sleep or something like that, then you know you can't retreat him at that point, right? So you'd rather have just have a switch at that point. And so I feel like a heavy count of switch allows you to have really cool plays. It allows you to have both. It allows you to play with two Celebes in one turn. It allows you to get all your energy onto Genesec and then just switch out the Celebi from the active. Um, the you might be thinking like why why don't you run Sky or Bridge that allows you to have the switching option? Yeah, that's true. But um, I feel like switching is better because um, you can move around more than like if you have like Skyro in a single turn you can only retreat once right no matter what so if you have a heavy counter switch though it doesn't matter about how many retreats you have like you can retreat one you can switch two that's potentially moving three different pokemon from the active right and you can't do that with Skyro. you can do it with switch though so it allows you to have really cool plays there's been plenty of times where i have two celebi on the bench one genesect celebi attaches one energy i switch into another celebi attach another energy and now i can attach a plasma energy as my manual attachment to be able to lysander something for a big ko like plenty of times that's happened and so it allows you to have really cool plays like that so that's why the, the switch count is up to three also potentially um against garbador if they do block all your all of your abilities and they start putting your genesex to sleep and getting them poisoned or whatever switch is there to be able to get the genesec out of the active or whatever you need out of the active so it, it allows you to be immune to certain things like excel or garbador is also something that you, you're immune to if you have heavy counts of switch and so switching is nice gives you cool plays allows you to remove special conditions um you could potentially drop one switch for one Skyro, but the you know the opponents often replace your stadiums anyway with Furbank or whatever it is. Maybe Tropical Beach is what they're going for, so it might potentially not be worth it to have too many stadiums. And we really don't need stadium Skyro. Is nice, however, switch is here, so yeah. A single tool scrapper very important. Uh, every competitive deck has one. Allows you to get rid of Float Stones off Garbodor or Junk Arm to get it back. Um, very nice to have. Opposing Genesex can get rid of their G boosters and uh, get rid of the opponent's float stones if, so that they don't have a free retreater. Just to, so many uses for, for Tool Scrapper, very essential. All right, so we talked about the Ultra Balls, we talked about float stone, energy counts, we talked about that. Um, so yeah, let's talk about overall matchups um, against the biggest decks, like uh, against, normally Genesex Auto Loss, right, is ty Typhlosion, Reshiram, and Embor Rayquaza, basically fire decks. Victini with the V Create attack. There's so many fire types that just just destroy. They just run through Genesec. That's where the Metapod comes in. This build with this Metapod line it allows you to have a fighting chance against those decks, and that's a that's a huge thing to say because notice how many resources we have to commit to getting a Genesec powered up. Um, we can't do that forever right like our deck is useful to be able to do that multiple times in a game but it's not enough against a fire deck where your 90x where their 90x basics are able to one shot your genesex like with low energy counts to, to like it's there's just it's just too much of a of a handicap and because this is the biggest deck in legacy it's got the biggest target on its back and so so many people play fire specifically because they know they're going to run into this deck so metapod is just super useful like i said every single fire deck i've played since i put him in it's been useful the one time i lost and that was because he catchered him early like yeah you even had to get a lucky catcher flip to get it early enough to be able to beat me to be like and then after that obviously you know we know we don't run any way of recovering pokemon um we really don't need it to be honest three genesect is enough in a match to be fair there are certain times in the like in in some matches where i wish i had a super rod or whatever potentially you can cut a bicycle for a super rod um but uh 
for now, this is the build. It's worked well for me at this point. It's my primary tournament deck at this point. I went away from uh, um, Sableye. Uh, what is that called? Uh, Sneasel? Sableye? No, no. Sneasel? Weavile. Yeah, I went away from Weavile. Because, you know, Weavile requires a lot to be able to get right in one turn to be able to play. I've beaten Weavile with this deck, too, because Red Signal allows you to, to snipe their Sneasels before they evolve. So um, it's not like it's an auto loss either with this kind of build. So against Weavile, it is technically a bad matchup. If they get, if they if their deck is working well, then you will likely lose because you know it's not EX versus EX, and they're able to one shot you. So it is what it is. I, I would say the Weavile matchup is probably like um, 60 40 in their favor against most fire decks. Uh, it all depends on if you can get Metapod out early. Um, I would say that it's, it's fire decks are now 60-40 in their favor, whereas before it was like 90 and 10 in their favor, you know? Like, <laughs> so it's, it's giving you a fighting chance, and that's that's all you need. But um, against, uh, let's see, Plasma decks, TDK, it's a pretty even matchup. If they get, like, if their build is fast and powerful, then... Um, they're going to be able to do some pretty serious damage before you can get set up. The problem is their Curiums are 130 HP, and so Megalocannon does 100, so the only way to, to really beat that in one turn is to be able to G-Booster it, right? So to be able to like to spend G-Booster on a, on a one-prize attacker and losing two energy in the process is actually um, pretty bad. Now, they, they can't use their lasers, so that's one good thing. That we have Mr. Mime to block that. So I'd say it's a 50-50 matchup at this point. Potentially uh 60-40 in our favor, to be honest with you, because um we were just that fast. So very nice. Against Darkrai, I feel like it's more 70-30 in our favor. Because um Darkrai is just like there are some versions of the Darkrai that just discard all your energy. So that is a possibility. We are prone to loss remover and crushing hammer, and Sableye can get both of those back infinitely if you don't deal with it. However, because of the fact that we can power up Genesect in one turn, we put a ton of pressure on the Dark Wire player because um, no matter how much energy they remove, we have ways of getting energy back. We have, and then we're one shotting all their Sableyes or whatever. So um, if you can get a good start against Dark Wire, you're going to win. I would say 70-30 is pretty good, especially with Mr. Mind. They're hitting you for 90 without even the 30 snipe. Like, if you don't have the 30 snipe for Dark Riot, that Dark Riot attack is not great. 3 energy for 90 damage is terrible. So, um, I would say that we're definitely advantageous against Dark Riot for sure. Against um, Garchomp, the thing about Garchomp is that um, if, they, if they're running their own Mr. Mimes, it's really bad. But if they're not running their own Mr. Mimes, what often happens is you get Genesect powered up in one turn. You can hit them and snipe 20 onto a Gibble or Gabite from the bench, um, potentially then Red Signal another Gibble or Gabite, and then snipe the same Gibble or Gabite for the another 20. And once you get 40 damage onto one of them through snipes, Garchomp's HP is 140, and so now you're in Megalo Cannon range. You don't need G-Booster. Um, and so also Red Signal does a ton of problems for, against the, like, uh, the Garchomp player. Because if you're powering up Genesec and you have the red signal to finish off the attack cost, you can red signal their Gibbles before they evolve. You can red signal their Gabites before they become Garchomps. Because they have to manually evolve from stage, from basic to stage one to stage two, that's two turns before they get a Garchomp in play. And so that those two turns, if you can play your Plasmas right, you have a huge advantage. And not only that, but their bench is often full of Pokemon. They, you know, they, they clog it up with Altarias and whatnot. And so what happens is, like, they might have maybe two Garchomp lines going, one Garchomp fully evolved, another Gibble or Gabite or whatever it is. So if you can deal with those two, the fact that they need two turns to be able to evolve a Gibble into a Garchomp and their bench space is limited means they can't do it. They can't, you know, have three lines going at the same time. They can only usually have one or two. So if you can deal with those one or two, you put yourself in a huge position because then you can just Lysander, you can just uh, red signal their their Gibbles or Gabites before they evolve, and they're never going to be able to get another attack off because that's their only attacker in those decks. And so I would say against that, we're, it's also like a 75-25 matchup in our favor. So pretty powerful um, for us. What are the big decks? So... Um, 
There's the Eel Dex, Ray Eels. Ray Eels is a 50-50 matchup because uh, the Eels have the Victini, and so you, you're in a rush to get your Metapods in, in play. And so, but if you can get it out early, they still have the, the Rayquaza to be able to get to one-shot you. And so the Rayquaza one-shots you, you potentially one-shot them if you have a G-Booster. If you don't have a G-Booster and you're hitting 100 damage, like, it's going to be pretty rough. If they're going to be able to one-shot you, you can't one-shot their Rayquazas. So that depends on the draw of who, what player gets set up quickly, quick enough. The fact, the problem is that the fact that they can get a Victini powered up within turn two, even turn one potentially, is the bigger problem because you need two turns to be able to evolve the um, Caterpie into a Metapod. Sometimes you need to be able to bench the Caterpie turn one, and you don't, you just don't draw into your Ultra Balls or Dual Balls to be able to find the Caterpie. And so, or if you do, you need them to get some other piece, and the more important piece, like getting a Genesect in play. Like if you you can get a Caterpie, but if you don't have a Genesect in play, then what are you doing with with the match, right? Like you have you need to get meta, you need to get Genesect in play. It's your only primary attacker. So against the Ray Quaza Eels deck, I'd say it's 50-50, um, potentially in our favor because now we have Metapod to mitigate their Victinis and. Um, we can often some like end them as well. If it just depends on their draw, to be honest. If they can get multiple eels set up, then you're you know we're gonna be struggling. The other thing is they often need Keldeo to be able to rush in and retreat their active Rayquaza to power him up. But Genesex G Boost or Genesex Mega Megalo Cannon one shots the Keldeo because of weakness, right? So if you can get rid of their Keldeos early, it puts them in a pretty tough spot to find ways to retreat. Uh, junk like uh, Tool Scrapper can also remove their floatstones so that they don't have free retreating options that way. So uh, there are ways to play the match in your favor, and then the Metapod can cover the fire weakness that Victini gives them, or the fire advantage that Victini gives them. So that's a 50-50 matchup. Against Embor builds, I would say it's slightly in our favor. I would say like 55-45 in our favor, maybe 60-40 in our favor, because we can often um, pull up their their Tepigs early and KO them before they become Embors. Um, getting a stage two out with a rare candy is not a it's not a guaranteed thing. No matter no matter your build, it's not guaranteed by turn two even. So if you can just uh, plasma it, like red signal their tepigs early, then puts a huge amount of pressure on them because their deck just can't function without the embor in play. So if you can just target the embor, um, then they can't really do anything if they don't have another way of getting another embor out. So I'd say potentially that's 60-40 in our favor. So there's just a lot of matchups at the top tables, you know, where like you're a lot of like your draw is going to decide a lot of things. But Genesect has answers for almost everything in the meta. With Metapod in the deck, there is literally no deck in the meta that Genesect is an auto loss to. And if there's no deck in the meta that Genesect is an auto loss to, and your deck has the ability to hit 200 damage within a turn and 100 damage within a turn, like you're you can kind of see why this deck is the top deck in the format. I would say that no matter what the opponent's deck is, if you're if you have a fast start, the amount of pressure you put on any deck, no matter what it is, no matter what build they have, um, even if it's a fire deck, the amount of pressure you can put on with the ability to Lysander them and the amount of damage output you can do is just so much. Like that's why this deck is the best in the format. But anyway. I've rambled on all like long enough. Uh, we're gonna show you two two matches with this deck. One match is a super cool match I had with one of my friends, and um, I'm gonna leave his Twitch channel in the description below. Go ahead and check him out. And uh, yeah, let's get into the matches. All right, we're playing against Sergio Esteban. Looks like he's got a Lightning Water Fire Dragon deck. That sounds like uh, Reshi Boar, I think. So yeah, let's see. Okay, we have some interesting starts here. So we're going to promote the Genesect. And we have a G-Booster turn one, so that's really good. It's always good to get it out early. Looks like it's going to be a... Okay, so... This is pretty bad, actually. Um, Mr. Mime is going to be useful to, to stop his Rikos. 
plays a Skyla as a supporter. Maybe he's trying to get another supporter, or he's trying to get Tropical Beach. Yeah, he's trying to get another supporter. So his, his hand is dead at least, so that's good. Alright, so we're going to play this. Going to attach this. We're going to get this in the discard. Okay. Going to attach this and then Oak. I absolutely need to get Caterpie out this turn. Please give me a way to do so, and I don't get it. Okay. So we're going to switch. At least he will be able to, like... I'm not going to bench him just yet. Going to be able to force breath the second one on. We know the Metapod's not prize, and it was a Caterpie prize. It is not, so that's always good to see. But we have all of our junk arms are prized. That is unbelievable. That is absolutely unbelievable. Um, if he junk arms the G booster, then like we have no options. So gonna end our turn here. We have a we have a Megalo Cannon next turn, potentially a G booster. There's of course you know turn one. Of course he gets it. Um, we haven't lost our. We haven't lost the, uh, what is it called, the Plasma Supporter that lets you get a Plasma card from this card, so that's really our only way to get that thing back. Uh, Jirachi will be able to help us like get it at the right time. We didn't get Caterpie out, which is really bad. That's two turns now before I can get Metapod in play, and it looks like he's going to be powering things up right now. Looks like his hand is okay. Okay, now we absolutely have to get Caterpie out, right? Please, okay, good. I was afraid he was going to give me like two tails, but all right. So before we even get a laser out, we're going to get Caterpie out for sure to negate his Victini. Um, now at this point, I feel like I still don't want to bench that Genesec, so I'm just going to end him. Even though his hand is dead, looks like. Um, because I can like at least take a KO here. Now, the downside here is, like he, well, he needs two Pokemon to do so, and I just gave him a fresh hand, though. Is it worth it? Like, I mean, my hand looks dead, actually, so I have no choice at this point. Um, I can get a junk arm for the random receiver off of the prizes. So, or I can just get an N. I might just get the N. So we're just going to have to go for it. Risk the Victini. There's a bike, actually. I might as well play that now. There's another grass. Don't need it. So, Megalo Cannon into this thing. Just gotta hope that he doesn't have... Um, do I get the end or Junk Arm? I feel like I need the Junk Arm, to be honest with you. Because I want to play... Um, that was probably a bad call. Because, like, I obviously need Junk Arms out of the prizes. But in within this hand, like, I don't have that luxury, I think. There's one... There is energy recover. I think it just gets you an energy back. All right, so he can get his last Pokemon, or he can get an evolution Pokemon here. So let's see what he gets. He gets an evolution. So his bench is still short by one. There's a Juniper, though. So he's going to get it now for sure, I think. He still needs a switching option. And... Yeah. Tell me he doesn't get it. I mean, that's really all I can hope for is that his draw is bad. <laughs> because my draw is bad. At least it will be evened out at that point. There's a junk arm. He's got all his electric in the discard now. If he gets an ultra ball here, he's going to get an energy search. He wants to get a fire, maybe? He's going to try to hit me with the Victini. Yeah, he's going to go for the Victini play. I mean, he can power it up. I don't think he's attached any energy either, so... Unfortunately, the risk that we were afraid of has happened, because he probably has another one here, he probably has an energy there, and, like, he's going to have the energy for the electric, and he has energy to retreat or float stone. No, he attaches to the other guy. Okay, he's just setting it up. There's a Juniper. Thank God. Alright, so, here's what I want. Here's what I need here. I feel like I'm gonna... There's no Ultra Ball in the discard, though. So... What to do? 
Um, I'm going to have to Juniper, right? I absolutely need... I guess I can just go for a dual ball. And attach the energy. Yeah. Go for the dual ball. All right, what else do I need on the bench here? I'm going to need another Genesect, to be honest. He doesn't look like he runs any lasers. So we'll play this. We'll attach the energy. And then we're just going to Juniper. There is the Ultra Ball, so I will be able to get out. For th Within this hand, I don't need the bike. So luckily, I was able to get the Metapod out just in time for his Victini to be useless. So that is incredible. Uh, this actually gets me energy back from the discard as well. So I'm just going to have to sit on that for now, though. And I can Megalo Cannon. Start chipping away at this guy. Um, yeah. And now I can... Now Junk Arm is the only way that I can get the G-Booster out. And so that's going to have to be the play that I have. Okay. Alright. He promotes the Rayquaza too, so let's see. Alright, so he's still powering up that Victini. Maybe he doesn't even know what Metapod does. Who knows? Maybe he just wants the 100, 100 damage. I mean, it, we're up by two prizes though, so that's the other thing. Like, we're up the prize lead. We have no weakness, so his Victini is useless, which would otherwise be an auto loss for us. So that's good. He might actually, he might really not know what Metapod does at this point if he's powering it up again. That's my thinking. Or he might think that that's the only way to do a heavy amount of damage. I'm not sure. Plays another Junk Arm. It's like his hand is really not cooperating with him, so that's that's kind of what we needed. Now our hand is starting to cooperate, so that's the other thing to think about. So. He just got rid of both of his super rods. He's getting a Keldeo. You have a floatstone? He does have a floatstone. Alright, so I at this point I honestly think he just doesn't know what it does. So yeah. He's gonna be in it for a surprise here. There's our V create. Man, it'll do nothing. Or it'll do something, but it won't do enough. Um can play this, don't have it. Alright, so I want to play one of this for sure to KO. I could actually just KO the the Keldeo. So but then I lose the Genesect, but then I have a KO after that. So I think I'm okay here. I will play this. Yeah, I'm gonna play this. To KO the Keldeo. Megalo Cannon. We'll threaten the Tynamo here. Alright, so what do I want? I want to get the other Junk Arm out. And I guess I'll we'll get the Coerce Machine out. Should have probably gotten the Selvia out, but it doesn't matter. The rest of the stuff doesn't seem doesn't seem bad. So, yeah, his Victini is actually going to be useless if he doesn't top deck into something here. So, that might be the match. I think he just did not read, know what Metapod does. And just went, in, went all in with the Victini play. And yeah, uh, he can actually take the KO with the Rayquaza, so that's really the only option he had at that point, to be honest. Now, we actually just win because we can just Junk Arm the uh, G-Booster, so that's game. Metapod coming in clutch there against Ray Eels. Still surprised people don't know what it does. Like at this, You would ideally be able to read it, right? Like, you should be able to read once I get it in, in play, right? Get Read it once I get it in play, and then you know. Alright, so G-Booster. And that's game. So, that's how you <laughs> dig out of a hand. Um, he misplayed pretty badly, not knowing what Metapod does. You can already see the value that it can give you in these matchups. 
But yeah, let's go on to the next one. Alright guys, so we got a match here against RK7392, also known as Sir Pandage. He has a Twitch channel that you should definitely go check out. He's a really good player. He has a bunch of cool decks. And he's been streaming pretty regularly, so go ahead and check it out. I'm going to leave the link in the description below. So this is going to be uh, Celebi Genesect against his Fire deck. I'm not sure exactly what kind he's running. But let's see if we can actually win against a Fire deck. So we're going first, so that's cool. Uh, definitely useful to be able to get set up faster than he will. Um... We start with the Metapod, and so the secret's going to be out. He's going to be able to see that I'm running away of removing weakness. And my question is, does he run catchers? Because that's really the only way that Metapod can get KO'd is if he runs catchers and if he gets it early. So, uh, good thing that, and you know what, this is actually perfect because uh, we have a Caterpie in our hand here. So, we're just going to do this. Um... Definitely going to be benching him. Now, I wonder if he's a sniper, because if he does, I'm going to have to get Mr. Mime out. But I will be benching the Caterpie early on, for sure. He's definitely going to be useful in this matchup. I know that, um... Okay, so, we have an Ultra Ball, and we have Energy. I'm going to have to save the Skyla for a... We'll have to save the Skyla for... Let me see here. Supporter. And so I'm going to have to bench this LB here. We're just going to have to power up the energy manually. And then we'll Skyla for a supporter. Might as well get a Juniper. He is running Emborg Rayquaza. Okay. So that means he's going to be able to KO us as with one shots for sure. So the grass weakness might not actually be all that important at this point. Because... Unless he's running the Victinis, or if he runs other fire types, because then he can always fall back on Rayquaza. So we're going to be trading, actually, pretty effectively here. And so this is actually pretty bad, because that means I'm going to have to get rid of this Embor pretty quickly. So that uh, I can destroy his energy acceleration. So here I actually have a chance to do so. So now I can Forest Breath. If I can draw into a Plasma and a Switch option, then I could... Potentially get rid of the Embor early. There's a switch and there's a plasma. Okay, so that's really good. Um, that's gonna set him back pretty badly. And hoping that, he, like, he's gonna. It also has. It also gives me options to be able to um, plasma again next turn, or even potentially uh, get a G booster. Hopefully, so we get a dual ball. It's going to be nice. Fortunately, we have to lose the Skyla and the uh, Shadow Triad, and so we're going to have to manually draw into our G-Boosters, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem now that we got rid of his way of energy acceleration. And so... He's definitely looking like he's going for a manual... Um, manual Rayquaza here. It's going to take him too many turns, though. There's a Tepig, and I really, really, really got to get rid of it as soon as I can, and so definitely we're going to need... To use the plasma energy. He plays the end though, so he actually ends us out of our hand. That would be disastrous for him, so that's very good. Good call on his part. We have the Metapod, we might as well evolve them so that we don't have any have any problems with fire types if we absolutely need, you know. He does run catchers though, okay, so that's good to know. That means all his junk arms can now get catchers back. He runs execute as well, likely to cut down on his superiors. Probably runs Tropical Beach. He's now he's smart like he's he's able to finally get two Tepig out, which is a very very smart move for sure. Which means that now I am actually um, in a pretty bad spot here. Like what I'm gonna have to do is grab my second Genesec. I'm gonna have to start powering up a second Genesec here. Luckily, it looks like he hasn't really gotten many one energy attackers so far. And so because of that, I think this is fine for now. Like, even if the, the Genesect and the active goes down, I have ways of potentially powering up another Genesect, so that's good. Uh, what is there any basic that I want right now? I don't see any sniping options, and so I think what I'll do is just Megalo Cannon 
And uh, I guess I'll just hit the Tepig. If, he'll probably evolve the one that could potentially get KO'd in two turns. And so... Um, that end really saved, I think, his, his match. Because if we, were, if we had been able to uh, red signal his Tepig again, he would be set back two more turns. And at that point, I feel like we would have gotten into such a huge lead. But if he can evolve right now with the Rare Candy Embor, I think he's going to be able to really do some serious damage on us. He's probably going to he's going to KO Genesect, and so we're actually going to be in a pretty bad spot at that point. So that end changes the match. But uh, hopefully he doesn't. Hopefully we get one more turn. And if so, we might have a way of ha having another Genesect set up for, as a response. Now we have ways of getting one Genesect powered up in one turn, obviously. But uh, we, we want to get into a the most advantageous position that we can and so for sure i think uh if we had an extra turn it would be a huge difference but uh let's see what he gets the discard or candy he has not he oh crap i forgot to i didn't see what he got let's see if it, the log shows me he played junk arm he used propagation it's okay so it didn't tell me what he got um let's see Let's see. Yeah, he doesn't tell me what he got. He should. I feel like it should tell us, right? Like that would be the most. That would be the you know the logical thing. He probably did. He they probably got a Rickani. I can't remember if he discarded one or not, but it's fine. So yeah. Um, looks like he's gonna get Embor set up. Oh no, he's not. He's gonna get Reshiram out. Okay. Luckily, now that I'm very happy we got the Metapod out early, for sure, because now his Reshirams are not going to be all that damaging for us. He, he, like, he's never going to be able to one-shot us, so he's actually he missed it. So, perfect, perfect. So, the question here, though, is do I want to... Um, he's on Tropical Beach. He's going to retreat into something, for sure. Because he doesn't want to give me two prizes. He's going to retreat in the restaurant. He's going to give, me, give it to me as fodder. Okay. Okay. So I'm actually going to... Because of that, what I'm going to do is not... I don't think I want to do that. So what I will do now is I will... Dual ball. Okay. That's good. I actually kind of wanted that to happen. Alright. Now we get two heads though. So what I'm going to do is get the second Celebi out. Because this will allow us to be able to really be aggressive with our switches. And I'm going to float stone one of them. I'm thinning my hand out so that I can maximize my potential of drawing a plasma energy. So give me a plasma. There we go. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Very, very good. Um, the other question is, do I want to hit the Rayquaza with the energy? Or do I want to hit the one that has a float stone? And... It's a tough call because what will happen is if I hit this one, right, he's actually going to be forced to attack with that. And so then I can for sure come in with my second Genesect and KO that one and then remove the lightning energy. So, or like, and then this one can be just sitting on the bench as an easy two prizes. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to forego my prize advantage to be able to do serious damage to his primary attacker. So, and then I can Megalo Cannon into, he's got 130 HP. I'm, still, I'm just going to pick on this uh, Tepig, might as well. He has only one more Megalo Cannon away from getting KO'd, which means he's probably going to be forced to evolve this one. But if he does evolve it, though, now that we've done 40 damage, if I remember correctly, Embor has 140 HP. And so, oh, he evolves the other one. Okay, so that means that's a free prize. Oh, he has 150 HP, my mistake. It's a free prize on the bench for any Megalo Cannon in the future, and I have one energy in my hand set up, so that's really great. Um, this means that he's definitely going to KO the Genesect. He'll go down to four prizes, but I'll take a KO and go down to three, and I'll actually take another KO and go down to two. And so we'll be up an entire EX. We'll be up two prizes at that point, so that's really good. But after that, the t so the t wow, okay, so after that, what can happen what i will have to do is probably play the bike and i just gotta hope for supporters so i can discard the jirachi for my last genesect because i will absolutely need a genesect on the bench to be able to continue 
and finish off the match. Because without that last Genesect, effect, I don't know how I can take my last two prizes is the thing. So definitely we're going to need to get that last one out for sure. Um, so he plays the Oak. Okay. So now he's going to have to attack with this one for sure. We're going to be able to take a KO, which is nice. How many energy has he discarded so far? None. So he's playing a junk arm for something, and I'm guessing he's trying to attack one of these guys. Not sure what he's getting. This is kind of scary. I wonder what he's getting. Okay, he's getting an Ultra Ball, so he might be powering up maybe another one. I'm not sure. We've used up two red signals, no discarded ones, so we do have two more options of a Lysander, which, you know, there's, we like I mentioned, three prizes are waiting for me to be able to take, and so he might actually, he's going to evolve the other one. Oh, man. That, <laughs> that's so bad, because now we're no longer up two prizes, we're up one prize after this KO. And that changes the match, actually. It significantly changes in the match. Very bad. Very bad. Alright. Uh, that might actually be game change. That might actually be pretty game-breaking, to be honest with you. Alright, so... We can force breath this. And I almost want to just, like, Ultra Ball these two away. Right? Yeah. Hopefully get something going with that bike. Uh, I don't want to get anything, even though I know... I, like, I really want that Genesect. I really do. But I need that bench spot open. And I want to maximize my bike. And so I'm going to, like, let it go. Play the bike. There it is. But... Did I, is there a random receiver in the discard, is the question. There is not. So, <sighs> so bad. So what that means now is I'm going to just have to play the Jirachi. He has catchers, and that's such a big problem for me. Or is it? What if I wait a turn? What if I bench this? And I attach the energy. Yeah, I think that's the plan. Now I can attach the energy. Can retreat into this Genesect. I can Mega Low Cannon. I'm just gonna hit the Ember one more time so that it gets him into Mega Low Cannon KO range. Somehow, if it's relevant, we're gonna take two prizes. There's an oak, there's a supporter, nice. So I don't have to play the Jirachi anymore, and I made the right call with benching the Genesect. Um, ideally, you know, I would have loved to have had the option to Megalocannon there, but it is what it is. Now, he's going to be able to take a KO here, and I'm going to need to get my G-Booster here, for sure. So, I honestly wonder if benching the Jirachi into a... Um, Juniper is the better call, and I think it is. So, when he KOs this Genesect, right, I'm going to promote the Jirachi, junk arm these two away for energy retrieval, attach the two energy, and then Juniper, or then Jirachi for, I'm sorry, I'll junk arm these two away, then Jirachi for a Juniper. And once I do that, then I have a way of G boostering. However, the downside, of course, is that. Okay, that might not be the better plan. Do I have? I actually have potentially another N. I might have to end him because this is starting to become really scary. If I Juniper and he has a way of responding, I think I lose. So definitely, I think he's actually powering up the Reshiram, or maybe he's just doing it. Okay, I'm not gonna focus on what he's doing at the moment. I need to focus on what I need to look for here. So. He's run through two superiors, he probably runs three. He run through two junk arms, he probably runs three. Four even would make more sense. Two catchers are already gone. He can't run more than two catchers, right? And so if he might have to be using his junk arms for superiors. He probably runs two more. So he is going for this blue flare. 
So what 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 does this change is the thing? What does it change? I think what it changes is he's not going to take a KO this turn. So that's one change. What I really need is a I need a plasma dude. <laughs> that's what I need. Um I can't remember, is this an option? It's search or deck, right? So it has to be an option. So if I play this, I can check to see how many I have left. Then I can junk arm these two for energy retrieval and then oak to energy back into my deck. So, or is that the right play? I think that's not the right play actually. So I'm gonna play this to check. So I have two left. Okay, what else do I have left in my deck? I have this, I have two junk arms, one retrieval, two energy. G booster is not prized. Everything else is there, so that's really good. Okay. I have two energy left, and then I have four energy total out of 18 cards. So I think I actually I still I think I still just do this, right? I should still do this, right? Just to get them out of the the the, the deck for superior and then I don't play the superior. I think that's the play. Now I can oak. And I need a plasma, please. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we even have a, a random receiver. Alright, alright. So what we can do here is we don't have a G booster, but we can attach the plasma to take the KO off of the Rayquaza. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, here's the downside though. He's going to attack with the Reshiram again, and so he's forcing me to take this one prize with a G booster, and then he swoops in with the Rayquaza. But if I take a KO on him, he only yeah, he only has one more left. So I think this is definitely the right play. Okay. So I Lysander this up. I Mega Low Cannon, and I'm going to hit now that he's under 100. I can just hit this thing. What is? What about his outrage? Would it matter? It doesn't matter. So we're just gonna hit that. It should be fine. He has four prizes to take, so he still has to KO this, and then he has to KO this. We have one prize left to take, so we're in a pretty good position. Of course, he could end me now, which would be bad for sure. Um, and I feel like he might end me now. What? How many ends? He's only gone through one. He has to run more than one. He's only even played like one, two, three supporters. Holy crap! He's played very few supporters. I feel like an end is incoming, which would be really bad. Um, we've potentially maximized our outs, though. We have bikes as well in our hand, or in the deck as well, because I don't see a single... There's one bike here, so there's three bikes we can draw into if he ends us. Several supporters, we checked it already. Um, he's going to end now, for sure, I think. That's what that means. So, yeah. We're going to be in a tight spot. He, we are actually going to be in a pretty bad spot because he is now then therefore two prizes away from taking a win. <sighs> so yeah, um, Selby. The good thing is Selby is going to be active, so I can accelerate a grass if I have one in my hand for sure to be able to attack with. But it leaves me the option of manually attaching my last plasma. So that is something to consider because if I can manually attach my last plasma, I just win the game. No matter what he promotes, because he's probably going to promote this thing. Secondly, if, if I can get a G booster, okay. Still, it doesn't change anything, right? It doesn't change anything, except now, that now I just need two energy drops. So, okay. Should be okay still. There's still Scrapper. That's Now that does change something. <sighs> he's really setting up for this end, right? Oh, I knew it. Well, I knew it. I mean, the best players always set up their hand to be able to end in this kind of moment. So, John Carm is not what I want. I need a top deck. Please give me a top deck. Okay. Please give me a top deck. Um, who does he need? Just a single 60? Yeah. Oh, that's even. That's also pretty bad. So, yeah. Okay. Top deck mode. This is how we win or lose this game. Um, two things that can happen here. I'm going to have to promote the Celebi 
and I top deck into a supporter. All is good with the world. I should be able to get a win from that position. Number two is I top deck into something that's dead, and so I have to leave Selby active. He still needs a catcher at that point and a full KO to be able to beat me. So that's several things that he would need, which gives us good chances, I guess. But yeah, let's see what we get. Okay. I'm actually going to not play that because I feel like I'm going to have to junk arm for something. Um, I, I've lost both Jirachis now, so... Wow, I can actually Tropical Beach. So... Then I mean... Yeah, I'm actually... Then I'm going to play this. So it's just one Celebi left, the last one. He needs a catcher. And yeah... If he has a catcher, he wins. If he doesn't, we have a good chance of winning. So that's just that's just the match. If he has a catcher, I'm sure he does. You know, he's played this this match really, really well to be able to, to play his outs correctly. He only has two junk arm in the discard. I you know, you gotta think that he's got another one for sure. But if he missed it, then I feel like we have a chance here. Let's see. Does he have another N? Does he have a junk arm for a catcher? These are the questions that are going to decide this match. Alright, so let's see what he has. He's got seven cards left in his deck too. So the thing here is, like, I have junk arms in my hand, right? So if he doesn't disrupt my hand, I have ways of, like, I can attach the energy from this other Celebi, switch into the Genesect, uh, Juniper, hopefully draw into my G booster and draw in, or draw into a plasma. Either way, I should win. And um, yeah, so we are in a good position. If he doesn't catch us, if he doesn't end us, and I feel like he might not because he hasn't done it, done those things yet. Okay, <laughs> catcher coin flip, catcher coin flip. This is what this match is going to boil down to. Let's see what he gets. Does he get it? Please give me tails. Please tails. Please tails. Come on. Yes. Oh. Does he have another one? Uh oh. He might have another one. He might have another one. He has a single card left in his deck too. He's got to run four. I, like most decks will run four. So does he have another one? Does he have another one? If he doesn't, we win. If he doesn't, we have a very high chance of winning. It's not guaranteed yet. We have to base it off a Juniper draw. But 12 cards left in the deck, taking 7 out of 12. That's like over 50% odds of drawing one of the two outs that we need. So, does he have another Junk Arm? Now you gotta think he would have played it by now, right? And so, <laughs> I'm just like rambling on at this point because I'm um, just wondering and worried if he has another Junk Arm. Because this match is super close. Uh, but yeah. Does he have another one? <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I feel like he doesn't, right? Because now what he's thinking is thinking through his head about how he can potentially win this game. What outs does he have left? And regardless of what outs he thinks he has, if he doesn't have that catcher... Okay, that means he might have it, right? Or if he's, or maybe he's going for a superior. Maybe he's trying to get energy onto something else. Okay, he is going for a superior. Gets rid of the tropical beach. He gets a bunch of fire back. So I feel like I'm feeling good at this point. I'm feeling like he doesn't have one. Okay. If he doesn't have one, I feel pretty good about this. So. For sure he doesn't have it now, right? I'm, I'm almost positive he doesn't have one now. So, yeah. He's maybe... He's thinking that I don't have a KO, potentially. Or he's trying to... I mean, he has to play as if I don't have a KO, right? Because otherwise, like, what does he do? Just resign? So, in that within that thinking, he wants to be able to account for an end. So, he's attaching energy from Mewtwo to set up a, a future KO. So, I think that's fine. But now it looks like I think we've won. It's not guaranteed yet, but I think we have won, so we can promote the Celebi. Okay. 
let's hope that everything comes out right. Okay, so we have a random receiver. That's fine. So now what I do is energy retrieval. Okay. I force breath this energy. Okay. Now I junk arm. What's the best use for junk arm outside of switch? Is there any other options I'm missing? Anything else I'm missing? Don't think so. What I can do potentially is maximize my outs for a bike. So what I do here is I play this and this. So that was a bad idea. That was very bad. I should have benched that guy to maximize my, my bikes. Switch. Okay. Switch into Genesect. Okay. Um, I now junk arm for these two for the bike. Okay. Play the bike. More energy. Play another bike. Okay. There's a switch. All right. So here's the do or die situation. Um, we know it's not prized, right? So I feel so. We, I think we win. We win, right? Because we have two outs. But we lose the energy. So if it is the last card in the deck, I think we lose. Unless we have more energy in, in the deck. So let's four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's actually all my energy. So it's so whatever. We're just going to go for it. We're going to go for it. There it is. And there it is. All right. So we have a good game. Well played, my friend. You did amazing. And luckily, I was able to draw into what I needed. That Tropical Beach essentially saved us. So very well played. Thank you for the match. And this was Celebi Genesect. We found a way out. His He played everything right, but we... we you know, we did go first, so maybe that single advantage was the deciding factor. However, um, you know, we potentially had a huge problem with his fire reshirams. However, we got Metapod out so early that he recognized that his reshirams were not going to be useful um, unless he tried to catch up Metapod. But if he's running EXs, then the prize exchange is going to be bad for him. So he recognized uh, that, that potential. And so he knew that it was going to be a dead weight card. He was good to be able to use it as a meat shield in the middle of the match there. So I think we just... We were able to draw what we needed. We played well enough to be able to win. He played amazing given the circumstance because Selby Genesect is such a strong deck that he and he really pushed it to the distance. Very well played, Sir Pandage. You know, make sure once again, guys, make sure to check out his Twitch channel. I'm gonna leave the link in the description below, so go ahead and check it out. He he streams pretty regularly. He has amazing decks, and as you can see, he plays really well. So. Um, anyway, this is Celebi Genesect, guys. This is definitely going to be the final match of this video. So, hope you guys enjoy this deck. Hope you guys enjoy the, the good, the new build that I was able to create here. And, uh, try it out if you have enough, um, packs to be able to get some Celebi Primes. Try it out and, uh, build it. And I'm pretty sure you're not going to be disappointed. So, alright, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. What's up guys, just wanted to show you real quick how you can find us at Phantom Knight. Just go ahead and come to the in-game item exchange center in the Pokemon Trading Card Game Online forums. The forum address is here, the full link is up here. And you scroll down a couple little bit here and then you'll see our thread, Phantom Knight Trading Company, that's us. And then uh, you can just look through our, our topics here. We got, we got everything in the game listed here. We have all the packs that we accept. We have all the prices that we listed, competitive prices. And so you can use this as a guide to figure out what your cards are worth. Or if you wanted to place an order, you can you can do that. And we'll be able to service you guys pretty quickly. So come on, swing by, and then ask us some questions. If you got any, just talk to us, and we're happy to help you guys out. And, uh, yeah, this is how you're going to find us. So hope to see you guys soon. Take care.